Greetings to you and to your household in the name of our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. I trust that all is well with you. So we are continuing our studies on the book of Genesis. And beloved, today we are studying Genesis chapter 37. Last time we studied Genesis chapter 36, where we learned about the life of Esau and his descendants. And we also learned from previous studies that the reason why God chose Jacob over his twin brother Esau to be the one through whom the Messiah would be born is because the Bible says that the things of God mattered to Jacob, but Esau despised the things of God. And so, beloved, if you miss this study or any of the other studies, please watch it from this channel and please subscribe so that you will not miss any more of the studies that are about uh, to be aired. And so, beloved, in today's study, we are going to study about the life of Jacob and his descendants. Jacob had 12 sons, and these 12 sons had four different mothers. It was never Jacob's intention to marry more than one wife. He first went in to marry only one woman, the woman that he really loved, who is called Rachel. But Jacob was deceived on, and on his wedding night, he was given Rachel's elder sister. And beloved, after this, Rachel was added to Jacob as well. So he had two wives. And Rachel and Leah also gave their maid servants to Jacob so that he would have more children with them and so beloved if you want to know how this all came about please read the whole chapter of genesis chapter 29 and the whole chapter of genesis chapter 30 for you to be able to understand how this came about it was never jacob's intention to marry even more than one wife and so beloved jacob's 12 sons are the 12 tribes of israel so Jacob's first wife, Leah, who was given to him by force, had six sons and one daughter called Dinah. And his second uh, wife, who is the one that he chose, Rachel, had two sons who are Joseph and Benjamin. And the two slave women also had two sons each. So in all, Jacob had 12 sons. And it is these 12 sons that make up the nation of Israel. They are the 12 tribes that the nation of Israel is built upon. And beloved, in today's study, we are going to study about the life of Jacob's 11th son. The son he had with his beloved wife, Rachel, Joseph. And beloved, Joseph is one of the very few people in the Bible who didn't do any wrong. And his life is used in the Bible by God to be a shadow that represents Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Joseph's life in the Bible, beloved, represents and shows the things that Jesus Christ was later on coming to do in the Bible. And so, beloved, let's go on to read the word of God. And so Genesis chapter 37 verse 1, it says, Jacob continued to live in the land of Canaan, where his father had lived. And this is the story of Jacob's family. Beloved, if you follow this study since the beginning of Genesis, you would know that when God called Jacob's grandfather Abraham to come out from his native country, he told Abraham to go into the land of Canaan. And God promised Abraham that he would give the land of Canaan to him and to his descendants. And so it is so important for the descendants of Abraham all to live in this land of Canaan that God had promised to give them. And the reason is also because, beloved, God wanted the Messiah that he promised through the line of Abraham to be born on this land of Canaan. This is the place where God wanted the Messiah, Jesus Christ, to be born. And so it was so important for the descendants of Abraham to live on this land of Canaan. And so, beloved, verse 2, it says, Joseph, a young man of 17, took care of the sheep and goats with his brothers, the sons of Bilha and Zilpah, his father's concubines. He brought bad reports to his father about what his brothers were doing. 
Bilha and Zilpah are the slave women that Rachel and Leah gave to Jacob to have children with. And the Bible is telling us here that the, her, their sons were wicked. And beloved, it isn't only their children that were wicked, but Leah, Jacob's first wife, also sons were also evil and wicked. In the previous study, beloved, we learned that the first son of Leah, who is Reuben, went to sleep with one of the servants uh, who were married to Jacob. And also, Leah's second and third uh, sons also killed innocent men of a whole city. And so, beloved, all the sons of Jacob were wicked and evil. But Joseph was different from them all. He hated evil. He couldn't stand their wickedness. And this is why he came to give the bad reports of their behavior to their father. And so, beloved, verse 3, it says that Jacob loved Joseph more than all his other sons because he had borne him when he was very old. Jacob was 91 years old when his beloved wife, Rachel, gave birth to their 11 son, Joseph. And because Jacob is very old at this time, he wouldn't go to the fields often or to shepherd the flock. And he would have spent more time with Joseph being the youngest child at home. And so, beloved, this is what would have made them bond so much that he would have so much love for this child. And also, if they were spending so much time at home, it meant that Jacob would be telling about uh, the things of God to Joseph. He would be telling all the commandments that God had commanded his uh, grandfather Abraham and his father Isaac to Joseph. And this explains why Joseph is not as wicked as the rest of his brothers, because he would have learned so much from his father about the things of God. And so this is why he probably hated evil so much and couldn't stand to see his brother's uh, wickedness. And so, beloved, in verse 3, as we continue, it says, Because Jacob loved Joseph more, he made a robe of many colors for him. The special coat that Jacob gives his beloved son Joseph foreshadows that he is the one that is going to be the ruler over the family. And it also represents the grace of God upon Joseph's life. So Joseph's hate for evil and longing for righteousness is one of the things, beloved, that makes his father love him so much. And right here, beloved, is one of the very first scriptures that symbolizes or foreshadows Jesus Christ in Joseph's life. So as Joseph is loved by his father, so does Matthew 3 verse 17 also tells us that Jesus is the beloved son of his father. And so beloved, we find one scripture, beloved, that appoints uh, Jesus in the Old Testament. This scripture, beloved, is a representation or a prophecy that was made in the Old Testament which Jesus Christ was coming to fulfill. And we will find more of this as we keep studying about Jesus' lives. And so, beloved, verse 4, it says, When his brothers saw that their father loved Joseph more than he loved them, they hated their brother so much that they would not speak to him in a friendly manner. Beloved, if you knew the actual reason why people hate you, you would even feel sorry for your haters. Joseph had done nothing wrong over here, but then they hated him so much and couldn't even speak to him in a friendly manner. So, beloved, if you are hated for no fault of your own, for no wrongdoing, then, beloved, this should be a sign to you that people can see the favor of God on your life. They can see, beloved, the robe of many colors on your life. They can see that God is favoring you, that God is prospering you. They can see that the grace of God is making things well for you. And this is why, beloved, people cannot stand you. And so, beloved, if you are hated for no reason, then why would you lose sleep over it beloved be happy because your haters beloved can see that you are blessed and so beloved be happy and give thanks to the lord and so beloved in verse 5 it says one time joseph had a dream and when he told his brothers about it they hated him even more 
He said, listen to the dream I had. We were all in the field tying up sheaves of wheat when my sheep got up and stood up straight. Yours formed a circle around mine and bowed down to it. Do you think you are going to be a king and rule over us? His brothers asked. So they hated him even more because of his dreams and because of what he said about them. Joseph's brothers could not just accept to be bowing down to Joseph in the future. They couldn't, beloved, just accept this. But what they did not know that this is not a dream that Joseph had dreamt himself. It was God's will and God's plan. It was the purpose of God, beloved, to make Joseph the ruler so that he would be worshipped by his brothers. Because his brothers had chosen wicked ways, God didn't choose them but chose Joseph who worshipped God and who the things of God mattered to him. Beloved, if Joseph had said this in an arrogant way or in a way to provoke his brothers, then it wouldn't have been right. But he shared this, beloved, with a good heart of saying the things that God has purposed for his future. But, beloved, his brothers envied him and so they couldn't uh, take this word of God. They couldn't take this word that God was going to fulfill in their brother's life to be the king or to be a ruler who rules over them. And so, beloved, what this is teaching us is that when people share their dream with us or or when we see other people in our lives prospering, beloved, instead of hating and envying these people, beloved, we should pray for them. We should help these people who have dreams, beloved, to be who God has called them to be. It wasn't uh, Joseph who had arrogantly uh, said these things that he would be worshipped by his brothers. No, this is the will of God. God wanted this to come true. And beloved, we know that whatever God purposed for us, beloved, no man can stop what God has already purposed to happen. And so if these brothers hated Joseph because of his dreams, then, beloved, they were hating God's will or they were hating God's plans for being fulfilled. So, beloved, whenever people share their dreams with you, instead of you hating on them, beloved, instead of you envying them, be glad for them, beloved. Pray for these people so that the will of God, beloved, will be manifest in their life. And as you are happy for people's beloved, to bring about the destiny that God has for them, so will God also make sure that you also, whatever you have on your heart, all your desires, beloved, God will also see to it that he will send people your way who will also help you to fulfill all the desires that you have in your heart. So all these brothers should have done was to encourage him for all the good things that God had planned for his life to be fulfilled. As we can see here, there is nothing in Joseph's life that shows that he was arrogant. The only thing that showed was his love for the things of God. He hated wickedness. He hated evil. And he reported this to his dad. And this was the beginning of the hatred that uh, he had from his brothers. But this is not a sin. This is what God wants us to do. God wants us to hate evil. And so Joseph was doing the right thing. And so, beloved, his brothers should have helped him, beloved, and to encourage him for this world that God has put in his heart to come to pass. But in Instead, beloved, they envied him even more. And because they are envying and they are hating what God has put inside him, it meant that nothing good was going to come to these brothers because they were against the will of God. And we know that everyone who is against the will of God is against God himself. And so God will fight against these people who were preventing his will from coming to pass. And so, beloved, as we read um, verse 9, it says, then Joseph had another dream and told his brothers, I had another dream in which I saw the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bowing down to me. He also told the dream to his father, and his father scolded him. What kind of a dream is that? Do you think that your mother, your brothers, and I are going to come and bow down to you? Joseph's brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept thinking about the whole matter. 
Genesis chapter 41 verse 32 says that when God reveals the same thing twice, it means that that matter is settled and God is going to make it happen. So beloved, God revealing to Joseph the same dream twice meant that God was definitely going to make Joseph the ruler over his family and they will worship him. God is saying through Joseph's dream that they need to acknowledge Joseph as the one who is going to be the leader or the ruler. But they said to Joseph, will you rule over us? Yes, beloved, he was going to rule over them. And this is the meaning of the quote that the father gave him. But they are against that. And beloved, even though it took 13 years for these dreams that God gave to Joseph to be manifest, beloved, even though it took this long 13 years, beloved, they finally came true. And so, beloved, do not mind the haters. Do not mind the people who are against you, beloved, because God always watches over his word to perform. Even though there are people who are against you, beloved, they cannot prevent what God wants for your life from coming to pass. Beloved, if God is for you, if the maker of this whole universe, beloved, is on your side and he has given you dreams and aspirations and he has given you desires, beloved, and people are against these desires from coming to pass, beloved, do not be afraid because God watches over his word to perform it and because every word that God says must come to pass must be fulfilled as Isaiah 55, 11 says, then beloved do not lose sleep over your haters just keep praying to the lord and he will make every one of the promises every one of the dreams that he has put in your heart to come to pass just as beloved god watched over joseph and none of the evils that his brothers plotted against him came to pass beloved so will god watch over you and make every one of the dreams he has put inside you to come to pass in Jesus name and in verse 12 it says one day when Joseph's brothers had gone to Shechem to take care of their father's flock Jacob said to Joseph go and see if your brothers are safe and if the flock are all right then come back and tell me so his father sent him on his way from Hebron Valley and so, beloved, this is also another scripture that uh, fulfills or describes and foreshadows what Jesus Christ was coming to do later in the New Testament. So, as Jacob sent Joseph to go and find his brothers, so, beloved, did God the Father also send his beloved son, Jesus Christ, to go and seek the lost sheep of Israel. And, beloved, this is found in uh, Matthew chapter 15 verse 24 and so this is also a scripture beloved that is fulfilled in the life of Jesus Christ in the New Testament and so beloved it says that so Jacob went after his brothers and found them at Dothan and 18 they saw him in the distance and before he reached them they plotted against him and decided to kill him they said to one another here comes the dreamer. Come on now, let's kill him and throw his body into one of the dry wells. We can say that a wild animal killed him. Then we will see what becomes of his dreams. Reuben heard them and tried to save Joseph. Let's not kill him, he said. Just throw him into this world in the wilderness but don't hurt him. He said this, planning to save him from them and send him back to his father. And beloved, Reuben is the firstborn of Jacob. And Reuben is the same one that slept with Jacob's concubine. But over here, here Reuben wanted to be merciful to his brother Joseph and save him. But at the same time, he wanted to please his other brothers who hated Joseph so much. And so, beloved, he failed to do the right thing. The right thing, beloved, was just to save uh, Joseph and defend him and take Joseph to his father. But because he wanted to please his brothers, he couldn't do the right thing. When you try to please others, beloved, you allow them to control you, not God. But beloved, since God is the one who has the power to bless and change destinies, beloved, why would you listen to people and please people instead 
instead of pleasing the Lord who has the power to make things happen, beloved, it's so important, beloved, that whatever we are faced with, any circumstance or situation that we are faced with, it's so important for us, beloved, to look at it from God's perspective, to look at it from Scripture's point of view and to do according to what God wants us to do. If we do this, then, beloved, we will always be listening to God and allowing God to use us instead of man. And we know that, beloved, whenever we do the will of God, God will always make us prosper and will fulfill his will and his plans in our life. And so, beloved, always make sure that you are doing what God wants you to do. And do not, beloved, be pressured by the people around you uh, not to do the right thing. Always, beloved, do the right thing that you know God wants you to do. And so, verse 23, it says that when Joseph came up to his brothers, they ripped off his long robes with many colors. Then they took him and threw him into the well which was dry. They met ham for Joseph, but God made sure that the pit or the well was dry so that Joseph would not be harmed. And beloved, you too, people might try to put you in a situation to destroy you. But beloved, don't worry. God would already prepare that situation or that circumstance, beloved. And God can turn around that same situation that people have put in to destroy you. For that situation to turn around and make good come to you. And so beloved, don't worry about what your haters do. As long as you are in the will of God, as as long as beloved you are a child of God and you are serving God and obeying his will then every pet beloved that your enemies and your hated plan to put you in beloved God will make sure that that pit will be dry and you will not be harmed and you will be safe and come out from that pit unharmed in Jesus name and so beloved reading on from verse 25 it says that while they were eating they suddenly saw a group of Ishmaelites traveling from Gilead to Egypt. Their camels were loaded with spices and raisins. Judah said to his brothers, Judah is the fourth son and is the son of Leah. He said, what will we gain by killing our brother and covering up the murder? Let's sell him to this Ishmaelite, then we won't have to hurt him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. His brothers agreed, and when some Midianite traders came by, the brothers pulled Joseph out of the well and sold him for 20 pieces of silver to the Ishmaelites who took him to Egypt. And so, beloved, this scripture right here is also another scripture that foreshadows what Jesus Christ was coming to do in the New Testament. And so, just as Joseph was sold for 20 pieces of silver, so was Jesus Christ also betrayed for 30 pieces of silver in Matthew 26 verse 15. And so, beloved, let's go on and read. And in verse 29, it says, When Reuben came back to the world and found that Joseph was not there, he tore his clothes in sorrow. He returned to his brothers and said, The boy is not there. What am I going to do? Then they killed a goat and dipped Joseph's robe in its blood. They took the robe to their father and said, We found this. Does it belong to your son? The robe of many colors represents the protection, the provision, and the love that Jacob had for his son, Joseph. And beloved, this is the same thing that is happening to us also today. Today, beloved, the Christians who are children of God are also going through the same struggles that Joseph went through. The devil is trying very hard, beloved, to rip the robe of colors on us. He is trying very hard, to, beloved, to rip the grace, the favor, the protection, the things that God has given us on our lives. And he's bringing diseases, sicknesses, 
financial problems, beloved, marital problems, to steal the peace and the joy that God has purposed for us to have. But beloved, do not worry because Jesus Christ says it in John 16, 33, that in this world you will have trouble, but cheer up, I have overcome. Beloved, Jesus has overcome all these things that the devil is bringing at us now. All these struggles that, beloved, the devil is throwing at us, Jesus has overcome them all. And this is why he is telling us not to uh, be worried, but instead cheer up. So reading on, after they showed the blood stained robe to Jacob, Jacob recognized Joseph's coat and said, Yes, it is his. Some wild animal has killed him. My son Joseph has been torn to pieces. Jacob tore his clothes in sorrow and put on sackcloth. He mourned for his son a long time. All his sons and daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted and said, I will go down to the world of the dead, still mourning for my son. So he continued to mourn for his son, Joseph. Joseph wasn't dead, but Jacob believed a lie and so he lost his peace. Satan is good at telling lies and this is why the Bible calls him the father of liars. Satan tries to make our problems seem so real that they will never go away. But first Peter 5 verse 8 says that the devil prowls around like a roaring lion. And so beloved, have faith in God and do not believe in the devil that your problems are here to stay. Beloved, those are circumstances that you are seeing right now. Those side effects of the things that you are seeing, those negative effects you are seeing, beloved, and those symptoms are not here to stay. Believe in God's word and do not look at the negativity around you to determine that, beloved, if you are going to be all right or not. Beloved, have faith in God. If you look at the negative circumstances around you, beloved, then like Jacob, beloved, you will be mourning, you will be crying, you will never have any peace. But beloved, look to God, beloved, and look in the promises of his word. Look in the Bible to read all the promises that he has for us. Beloved, this is how you will have faith to believe that all the negative circumstances, all the lies beloved around you are not here to stay. But beloved, God will use them to bring about the goodness in your life. So take your eyes off the negative circumstances in your life, beloved, and put your eyes on God, beloved. Make God big so that all your circumstances will shrink and be small and they will lose the effect that Satan wants them to have in your life. The only reason that Satan brings all these troubles to us in the first place is, beloved, to steal our joy, to steal our peace, and to destroy our hopes for the future. But God has said it that he came so that we will have life and have it more abundantly. And so, beloved, you have to read the scriptures to know all the good things that God has for you and put your mind on God, that God is big. And so, beloved, because he's so powerful, if you are for him, then nothing can be against you. Once you, beloved, you make God the focus of your life, then, beloved, everything that the enemy brings at you, beloved, will not have effect and will not steal your joy in Jesus' name. And so, beloved, reading on from verse 36, it says, Meanwhile, in Egypt, the Midianites had sold Joseph to Potiphar, one of the king's officers, who was the captain of the palace guard. Even though the brothers were preventing God's will to come through in Joseph's life by destroying Joseph, beloved, God was going to use all the deed to bring about the fulfillment of the will that he plans for Joseph. What they did was evil, but God used it for good. Beloved, when you are hated, it's a sign that God is going to elevate you to a new dimension. God uses the hate to push you into where he wants you to be. So beloved, don't worry about your haters because they cannot stop God from what he plans to do for you. They cannot stop God's will from coming to pass in your life. And so beloved, when people rise against you and tell all sorts of lies about you, don't be discouraged or upset. Their hate is just an indication that God is about to take you somewhere. Since he 
Hebrews 4 verse 12 says that the word of God is a double-edged sword. The word of God cuts both ways. So beloved, you too must not be jealous of anybody's progress or their dreams or their destiny. Get your own dream and don't want anything that anybody has. When God has something for you, that thing, beloved, will not go to anyone. You will have it in due time. So, beloved, there's no need for you to be jealous of anybody. So, I pray that, beloved, this word of God will help us in both ways not to be worried about the people that hate us and so that it will also help us not to also hate other people for what they have. And so, beloved, this brings us to the end of today's study. But join me again next time because we have not finished the study on the life of Joseph. And so, beloved, if you have not already subscribed, please subscribe so that you'll be notified to watch the next lesson. And so, beloved, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious unto you. And may the Lord have mercy on you and give you peace. You are blessed.